Welcome into this edition of Horse Tracks. I hope you guys all had a fantastic Victory Monday. Monday. I know it took about a month to get to, but look, we finally had one. The Broncos finally won the football game. And don't worry, I know your thoughts. I mean, Broncos country's thoughts on the whole. There's a lot of mixed emotions going on because the Broncos actually won a football game, which is such a weird thing to be feeling right now. But with that being said, my name is uh, Coach Ross. We're here to talk all things Broncos versus Bears. Um, talking why it's probably okay that the Broncos didn't lose this game because apparently Caleb Williams doesn't want to go to Colorado anyway, or at least doesn't want to go back to it after they beat the Buffaloes. Uh, this previous weekend we're going to talk winners and losers from their game against the Bears big emphasis on Van Joseph is still being a loser this defensive stat is not great to say the least um, and then the, as of right now the Broncos apparently are not looking to be early sellers of although that may change and just a quick little update on the latest injuries um, but before we get into things just want to give a quick shout out go on over to um, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Follow us at Mile High Report. Um, and you can also check out all of our awesome articles over milehighreport.com. Um, and then you can also, most importantly, my uh, offense line film breakdowns. Um, it will be out either this Wednesday or Thursday. And this week, we'll be taking a look at one of the winners from this week. Just wait and hear who actually had a really good game in Pass Pro. I am just as surprised as you guys are. Don't worry about that so without further ado let's talk broncos versus bears and the whole caleb williams situation so here's why we shouldn't be worried that the broncos didn't lose this game and why they're i think they're the fourth overall pick as of right now um according to tankathon um so it's because the news that dropped on monday is that caleb williams says he could actually make more money returning to USC next season than is a rookie in the NFL. Honestly, that's really not that surprising. NIL is freaking insane right now. Um, and he also says that he can pick what team he wants to go to because of that. And according to NFC North News, the uh, um, Twitter account, the only five teams that Caleb Williams would play for are the Cowboys, Raiders, Vikings, Giants, and the 49ers. Now, I'm not obviously you probably want to take this one with a grain of salt. Um, not necessarily the best track record, or at least a proven track record from this Twitter account. Um, didn't name exact sources, um, uh, or I mean, probably from Caleb Williams anyway. Um, maybe. Um, one of the sources that are not really listed. It does make a little bit of sense that he would want to go to um, San Francisco because apparently he grew up as a, as a 49ers fan. The Vikings, not a horrible situation. The Giants, yeah, I could see that. The Cowboys, I could see that. The Raiders, why would you want to go to the Las Vegas Raiders? Especially when the current head coach is just throwing an inexperienced, ill-prepared rookie underneath the bus after they lost that game against the Chargers. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, Mike McDaniels uh, was talking about, or Josh McDaniels, excuse me, was talking about the game. Um, and essentially he said that their um, quarterback should have held on to the ball better, you know, Dr. McDaniels is a giant piece of crap, but also we've been knowing that. But let's go ahead and talk winners and losers from this game. The first winner we have to do, man, Russell Wilson. He is absolutely back, and he just has best game as a Bronco. Um, very, I mean, obviously all things debatable, but strong opinion. I think he had the best game as a Denver Bronco. Let's talk some stats. So. He finished the game 20 for tw uh, 21 for 28 with two for 233 passing yards in three touchdowns. That's good enough for a 133.5 rating. He only took one sack. He overcame penalties. He kept the offense focused. Uh, when it hit to 28 to seven, you know, let's talk about the start of the game winning drive, the 48 yarder. Um, and then the interesting thing here is too is that 
last season, it took it wasn't until week 14 that Russell Wilson hit the nine touchdown mark. He's done that this year in just four, and that's the second most passing touchdowns in the league right now. And some more stats for Russell Wilson. Right now, he's first in completion of 40 plus yards, second in touchdown percentage. Um, tied second touchdown passes, third in passer rating, seventh in yards per pass attempt. So he's not just hitting some little dink and dunk check down stuff. He is getting the ball down the field and, and seeing a number of these stats. He's eighth in yards per completion, ninth in passing yards, and ninth in passing yards per game. So, Doc, you know, everyone was wondering, hey, is he actually earning his contract? Russell Wilson is earning his contract right now i strongly believe that and also just makes it all the weirder that russell wilson's having a great season he's earning his contract the broncos haven't had a court a good quarterback in so long they have one right now and yet there's so many people talking about trading him away uh, i i don't understand it i really i mean i kind of understand it but when you put it into the context, I, it, I don't like it. I don't like that talk. Um, obviously, if that's your opinion, sure, fine. Uh, I am not on that side of the boat. That's for dang sure. But it's a win like this. Another reason why Russell Wilson's a winner here, because this win is finally allowing people to talk good about Russell Wilson on social media, in the mainstream media, and highlighting just how good he's been all year. Um, also, he is now 10th all-time in fourth quarter comebacks. He has led 32 career fourth quarter comebacks, passing Joe Montana and Eli Manning this week. Um, and if you want to take a look at quarterback efficiency, um, where um, Russell Wilson is actually near the top of the league in quarterback efficiency. The names, the only three names He's behind, or there's two names he's clearly behind, and that is Brock Purdy and Josh Allen. And a name he's pretty close with is Tua. So that's a really good um, group of quarterbacks to be near. Um, then also, just more positive news is that Team Source told the Athletics' Diana Rossini that the relationship between him and Sean Payton is quote flourishing. Sean Payton. Um, is the other winner and let's talk about him real quick he got his first game as a bronco he avoided a disastrous loss to the bears big comeback there and all in in uh, his career record in october has gone up to 46 and 15. all we talked about this he doesn't necessarily perform that well in september but come october it's a different team he typically has but sean Payne was brought in to fix russell wilson in the offense he has clearly done that so far. So good news on that standpoint. The only negative, really the only knock you can give Sean Payne right now is that he's the one that ultimately hired uh, Vance Joseph. And we all know just how poorly that has gone. Uh, another winner is Marvin Mims because he's still the most explosive player in the league. So far this season, he has 39 receiving snaps, 11 targets, 9 receptions, 242 yards and a touchdown he is averaging a 6.1 or sorry 6.21 yards per route run that is phenomenal stuff and we'll, we'll get to this and we'll get to the trade talk in a second because this is really really good news and even better news when you're talking about the trade situations who the broncos might be dealing as well also he caught a 48 yard bomb during this game on that game winning drive that was huge for the team um, the guy who I wasn't necessarily expecting to have this go for stat line that I'm going to talk about right here is, I'll let you guess it. So he had 31 pass blocking snaps and zero pressures allowed. Give you a couple seconds. Who do you think it was? Was it Mike McGlinchey? No, it was not. Was it Lloyd Cushenberry who's been doing better? No, it was not. Was it Ben Powers? No. Was it Quinn Miners? No. Yes. Sir, it was Garrett Bowles that had this big time game. One of the best games of his career. Maybe that just might be uh, boosting his trade value a little bit. Um, got a couple more winners here. Jonathan Cooper with that big time 35 yard scoop and score. He caused that sack on that with two. Also finished the game with two quarterback hits. And Nick Benito, he 
arguably had the best game of his career. Two and a half sacks, two quarterback kicks, two TFLs. He was playing lights out this pass rush that has been bad all year long. Really picked up. I know it's against the Bears, but let's just be positive. The pass rush really came home um, on Sunday. Really, really came through for the Broncos. And last guy I'm talking about from the offense is a guy who you can make the case that he should be the starter on this team, Jaleel McLaughlin. Come on, man. He is great. The Broncos need to use him way more effectively than they have so far. Um, let's talk outside runs. Let's go outside zone, toss, um, counter. Let's throw that one in there. Um, a lot more running back screen zone. No more of those wide receiver screens because they clearly have not been working for the Broncos this year. That's for dang sure. But in the running, he was a game's leading rusher. Seven carries for 72 yards. That's 10.3 yards per carry with a long of 31. Um, and he also had in the receiving game, of course, he had that screen that went for a touchdown, uh, three catches for 32 yards, 10.7 yards um, av per, um, per reception. Of course, the long was on the 18 yard um, screen. Jaleel McLaughlin, he was phenomenal. He had 105 total yards in this game and he only touched the ball 12 times or sorry, excuse me, 10 times. That's incredible. He is a future star, and the Broncos once again have found gold with a undrafted free agent, let alone a undrafted free agent that's a running back. This is really, really good stuff, especially um, with some of the injury talks, you know. Heck, um, Javonta Williams. Right now, let's just talk about it. He's listed day-to-day -day right now. Samaj J. Perrine, he's been a good uh, acquisition. He's been solid when they need him, but the running back has, their running game hasn't been phenomenal. That's for dang sure. Javante Williams only um, car carried the ball twice this game. Didn't gain any yards. Um, Samaj Perrine, he um, touched the ball six times. Didn't uh, only gain 12 yards. Um, well, I'm sorry. He caught a couple passes. So he touched the ball you know, eight times, but you only had six carries. Jaleel McLaughlin is the guy to build your running game around right now. Um, and the Broncos have two incredible dynamic playmakers. Uh, when it comes in the pass game, you got Marvin Mims Jr. When it comes to the run game, Jaleel McLaughlin. These are two dudes that you want to build your team around. Some really superstar potential in both of them, which is awesome. Awesome. But with the positives out of the way, let's talk about the losers. We got, of course, Mari Mathis, who's still getting constantly cooked out there man it's horrible the broncos oh man really hope that riley moss is able to use and more uh, just just more in general uh, especially this game against the jets randy gregory he got benched and that uh, signing is really not boding well for george payton and his job <laughs> right now um and of course we know that vance joseph even, even though the broncos won this game don't forget that he should absolutely still be fired um the broncos have the worst defense in the league right now and they also have the highest dvoa through four games in nfl history um the lowest you know the we got some of the top five right here if you want to go through it so from five to one of the worst yeah 2001 buffalo bills who started the league off or the season off 0 and 4? Um, they had a so the higher the DVOA percentage, the worse your defense is. They had a 32 point or a 33.1. The most recent bad team um, in this top 10 is going to be the team who has the second worst, and that is the 2008 Detroit Lions. Um, 0 and 4 through four games, 35.5%. And then you got the Broncos right there at the top, one and three with a 38.5%. Vance Joseph has got to go. Now let's just talk about the last uh, thing here um, before we wrap up for the day. And that is that the, the fact that according to Ian Rappaport, the Broncos are not looking to be early sellers this year. They still might be selling though. So... It obviously depends on how the this next couple of um, this next little stretch of games go for the Broncos um, right now. So if you want to take a look at their schedule, they're coming up to a really tough stretch. So they had the, the most winnable game of the season was the Bears. They won that one. Second most winnable game of the season probably going to be the Jets. They have that one this week, of course, which they'll be breaking out their color rush and white helmets for the first time. I'm looking forward to that. But after that, you got the Chiefs. The um, 
at the Chiefs, home against the Packers, home against the Chiefs, at the Bills, home against the Vikings, home against the Browns, at the Texans. The Texans are a good football team right now. Then, of course, you got to go to uh, um, the Chargers. Then they have to go to Detroit. They're home against the Patriots. Always a tough one. They are home against the Chargers, and then they're at the Raiders, the last game of the season. If you look through there, there is maybe, let's be generous, maybe win against winnable games. Jets. Packers, maybe. Maybe the Vikings, maybe. Um, maybe the Texans, but they're looking really good right now. And then, of course, you got the Raiders and maybe the Patriots. So in, you got maybe six games, six winnable games the rest of the year. So that's, and then uh, before the trade deadline too, you only have two winnable games, really. So it, Broncos could still very well be sellers at the trade deadline this year. Um, and uh, some of the names um, that have been circulating the trade rumors, of course, he had over the offseason, he had Cortland Sutton. He's still up there. Jerry Judy's up there now. Justin Simmons is on that list. Garrett Bowles is on that list. Luckily, Pat Sertan is not on that list. They're keeping the young guys. That is the plan for the franchise. And I definitely would not mind putting Randy Gregory on this list, especially coming off what we just talked about with him. So while the Broncos are not looking to sell yet, they still very well could be. Um, well, it's really just what happens over these next five games that will determine what the Broncos are going to be doing. Now, they're probably going to be sellers, but hey, there's a chance that they're not. Let, let's be honest, the Broncos are five points away from being three and one right now. So you, you don't really know right now. Um, that's really what it comes down to. We can still hold out hope. I know most of you are still hoping that the Broncos lose and um, get put in the Caleb Williams talks and, or stay in the Caleb Williams talks. I can't do that. I have to root for the Broncos to win every game. So uh, that's just where I'm at, and that's where you guys are. You know, it is what it is. You know, and I'm sure there's a, there's a lot of you guys that agree with me too. I see in the Instagram comments. Don't worry. But that's going to wrap it for this edition of Horse Tracks. Thank you guys so much for tuning in this time. Um, of course, you could, whether whatever podcasting platform you're currently listening to this on, go ahead and uh, follow us there. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. really means a lot to us. You guys have been killing it in the downloads and the listens um, of all the podcasts. So think, even though the season has been rough, you guys have been making it awesome on our side of things. So we really, really appreciate your continuous support support of us but with that being said go ahead and go on to milehighreport.com for um tons of awesome daily articles my um, offense line film breakdown of garrett Bowles will be out um, wednesday or thursday um and then also you know more podcasts multiple podcasts a day so you guys just skip it here we're having a great time and also make sure to follow us on facebook instagram or twitter at mile high report i'm uh, way more inclined to the instagram just because yours truly runs it and i see everything that you guys post all the comments all the stories all that stuff and i i see it and i respond to the uh the positive ones and the insightful ones if it's just general hate and pessimism i kind of Keep myself away from that but you guys have a fantastic week go out and be a blessing on to someone else this um today this week whenever you can and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one